Prime Minister uh, meeting China's President Xi Jinping for the first time. Uh, Australian leader's been there uh, in Beijing for seven years now. Let's go to the uh, former Labor Senator Stephen Conroy. See, so, Stephen, there's been a lot of talk, a uh, lot of talk. Nothing real firm has come out of it, though. What, what's, what are your reflections of this meeting overnight? Well, I think our relationship with China is always going to be challenging when they're so aggressive. They're prepared to break the international rules in not just, you know, territorial claims, but in how they behave on trade matters. So the previous government had got themselves to a situation where they were playing domestic politics uh, and, you know, trying to ramp up differences between Labor and the government at the time. Uh, and they paid the price by you know, what you call foghorn diplomacy. Uh, what we're seeing under Albo and, and Penny is an ability to stabilise our relationship. We've seen Don Farrell make good strides in getting a lot of the banned goods. Uh, and there was no reason for them to be banned, so let's be very clear. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. I mean, we, we, we would have won, right? H had those cases gone to the WTO, we would Absolutely. have won. No, well, that's right. I mean, all, all China are pretending that they're letting our produce back in the country is they've agreed to play by the rules-based order again. I mean, China, you know, will always uh, make its own decisions. They don't care about the international rule-based order. They'll pretend for a little while now that it's all good. But, you know, you'll get a situation where uh, the... Uh, uh, if, they, if they take offence, you know, a faux offence about anything Australia says, you know, doesn't agree with it anywhere, they'll, they'll go back to the same bullying tactics that they've been used... Well, that's right. The last four or five that, years. That's the problem. And so, that, so when the prime minister was asked if he trusted Xi Jinping, and he squibbed the, he squibbed the question twice. I mean, that in itself is an answer, right? And he's and he's right not to trust him. Obviously, he can't say yeah. that when he's there, but uh, <laughs> he's right. He's right. He won't get home. But uh, well, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but he's right too, right? No, totally. Uh, I mean, you, you just got to look at what China does, not what it says. Uh, I mean. It, it, it promised it wouldn't militarise the South China Sea, uh, and it has. It's engaged with significant coercive bullying with its other neighbours, the Philippines, Vietnam, even Indonesia, uh, at various stages. Uh, and but even cyber has, here. Well, look, I mean, this has been going on for 15 years. I mean, you used to get up each morning and ministers in, in our government would look at each other and go, to see what China got up to overnight? I mean, they are about stealing every bit of intellectual property, whether it's for commerce or for, you know, security purposes. So, no, you can't trust them. It's better not to have a shouting, screaming relationship with them. So, you know, congratulations to the PM and to Penny for the job they've done. But Australia has not changed its national security position. Like we've expelled yeah. spies. We've uh, interfered in uh, operations where they're trying to influence Australians. Uh, we've maintained a, a strong military uh, relationship with the US despite the best efforts of uh, China to undermine it. So the government is clear-eyed about its relationship with China, to its credit. Yeah.